go. Okay, great. Uh, good morning. My name is Andrew Gordon, A-N-D-R-E-W-G-O-R-D-O-N, -E Baybridge spokesperson. Uh, welcome to day three of the Baybridge closure. Uh, we are at hour 60 of the closure, if I've done the math correct. Uh, so here's the construction update. Construction continues uh, on schedule. The progress has been good. Um, at the tunnel, all paving uh, at, into and out of the mouth of the tunnel uh, to connect in the tunnel, uh, to connect that section of the bridge into the tunnel has been completed. Uh, today, the work is going to focus inside the tunnel. Uh, this morning, they are working on continuing to switch out the lights in the tunnel from the traditional lighting to LED lights. And later today, they're going to be washing the inside of the tunnel. Uh, demolition continues to move uh, forward as well. Um, again, they are removing a 1,000 foot long section of the original westbound approach um, out of the toll plaza onto the original bridge. That's causing a conflict with the bike and pedestrian path here in Oakland. Uh, they are scheduled to have that demolition completed either, uh, I would say, by late tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, and at roughly that same time, they will be able to start putting in the temporary bike path connector that will allow the public to start using the bike and pedestrian path at noon on Tuesday. Um, again, there's a conflict at the west end of the bike and pedestrian path because of the original span, um, and uh, that will not be connected in until early 2015. At the Oakland end, uh, once traffic is on the new bridge, uh, they will be able to finish the permanent connection into Oakland for the bike path in about 6 to 12 months. At the toll plaza, um, all grinding is complete. Um, all the, uh, they are paving asphalt. That work is ongoing uh, and will be ongoing for the next 24 hours, and they have begun striping on the westbound uh, lanes uh, heading into the toll plaza. Um, we don't. We aren't seeing any um, issues coming up. There is a. Uh, there's an A's and a Cal game today, and that could cause some minor delays with some of our asphalt trucks. Um, if that does, it's not an issue that we cannot re recover from. Any questions on general questions on uh, construction? I also have um, a representative here from MCM Construction Project Manager, Greg Allen. Uh, MCM Construction is the prime contractor um, at at the work at the tunnel and on the demolition, and he can give you a little bit more information about that. Andrew, could you do the part about you're removing a 1,000 foot, do that one more time? Sure, uh, so we are again um, removing a 1,000 foot long section of the original westbound deck. Uh, it's basically when you start to rise up onto the bridge, uh, that is a causing a conflict with the bike path. Um, so we are removing that 1,000 foot long section. Uh, that work is moving along without any issues. We expect that work to be wrapping up uh, either late tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, once that section has been moved out of the way, we can put in the temporary connector for the bike path so that the public can start using that on Tuesday at noon. Uh, once we have tr moved traffic onto the new bridge, it will take about six to 12 months to put in the permanent bike path connector uh, on the Oakland side. And then once the public's on that, we will take out the temporary connector. Are you still thinking Tuesday, five o'clock is an opening or potentially sooner? Uh, you know, there's always that potential, but again, right now we ask that everyone still plan their their holiday week, their weekend travel, their Tuesday morning commute based on a 5 a.m. Tuesday opening. How dirty is that tunnel, and what's it take to clean that thing out? Uh, I think maybe Greg uh, might be able to answer that question. I would say pretty dirty, but I don't know what it takes to clean it out. But I'll uh, I'll allow Greg to take that question. Uh, one more question. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, what's what's going to become of the S curve? Is it going to be is it going to stay there? Is it going to be uh, no, the S-curve is going to be taken out um, as quickly and safely as, as possible. The S-curve is what is preventing us from, uh, one, of the, one of the things that's preventing us from building the bike path all the way to the island. It's also impeding the path of the permanent uh, eastbound on-ramp from the island onto the new bridge. There is a temporary eastbound on-ramp, um, but the S-curve is preventing us from building the permanent eastbound on-ramp. So the S-curve uh, is going to come out quickly. I don't know when you'll actually see demolition start. Uh, but as soon as traffic is on the new bridge, the contractor will have access to the original east span, specifically the S-curve and the cantilever, uh, to start that demolition process. So Tuesday at noon, will bicyclists and pedestrians be able to make it all the way to the island? No, no. Uh, on Tuesday at noon, you'll be able to access it only from the Oakland side. Uh, we cannot build the pedestrian bike path all the way to the island because there is a section of the original bridge, a little bit of the cantilever and the entire S-curve is in the way. Once that has been demolished, uh, the current schedule shows us finishing that work and opening that access to the island in early 2015. When the pedestrian bike path does open at noon on Tuesday, you'll be able to get a little bit past the tower of the suspension bridge.
Greg Allen. I'm uh, Greg Allen with MCM Construction, project manager, uh, addressing your concern on the cleaning of the tunnel. We're going to start right now with just hot water and see what it does. Um, if we have to add some form of a, a cleaning product, we will. But right now, we think it will come off because it has been cleaned recently. So. Just uh, soot from buffer? Probably that and tires and different stuff that, that is stuck to it. But it's not, it's dirty, but it's not t too much. So I think the hot water will take care of it. Any questions on, I'm in control of the, uh, the bike path, temporary bike path, the demolition, which is ongoing. It seems to be going very well. Um, they're starting to remove the beams in the section where we have to install the bike path. So hopefully we can get started sometime midnight, later, a little bit later on installing that temporary bike path. So Andrew had mentioned that the, the beams from the westbound incline were, were hindering the path, but not the lower? Not the lower bridge. The actual lower bridge, we're going to sit the uh, temporary bike path on top of it. That's where it's going to go. It's wooden? It's wooden. It's, it's you guys, when you're driving out there, you can see it off to your left as you're going off the bridge. Spell your name and give us your title again. Uh, Greg Allen, G-R-E-G-A-L-L-E-N, Project Manager, MCM Construction. The company that's doing the demolition for us is Cleveland Wrecking, and they're, uh, they're on, on schedule and working hard at it right now. <laughs> well, there's a lot of, it's pretty complicated because there's a, the paint that's on the beams is lead. So we have to be, we have to control the access. We have to supply uh, proper safety equipment and monitor and then cut each beam out at a time. It's, it's pretty complex. And then swung out each one and then, and then relocated. What can you change on your itinerary today? <laughs> My itinerary today is hoping that the uh, demolition gets completed and then we start our major work. So, which is, is the setting of the bike path. Um, right now, if you go out there, the spans that they're working on right now are the ones that I need removed for me to uh, start erecting my, uh, my temporary bike pack, which is where the uh, basically Oakland Bay Bridge starts going over the water, coming back. On the uh, tunnel side, all the uh, polyester has been placed. My comp uh, our company is American Civil Constructors. Uh, they've completed all the polyester work on that far end. They're doing one small joint, which you guys will see and then we have to finish polyester and over the top. So our temporary on-ramp is paved in. Striping will start tomorrow morning at six o'clock. How many crew members you got out there? How many crew members? Between Cleveland, us, and ACC, um, probably somewhere around 150. Working around the clock. Thank you, Greg. Okay. And uh, now I'll ask uh, Officer Daniel Hill to give you an update from the CHP. Good morning, Officer Daniel Hill, California Highway Patrol, uh, Public Information Officer, D-A-N-I-E-L-H-I-L-L. -L. Want to report that we saw a pretty significantly increased uh, congestion yesterday um, in sort of the areas that we expected. A lot of people seem to be leaving the peninsula area. There was a significant increase in traffic northbound on 101 and uh, over the Golden Gate Bridge and eastbound on 92 across the San Mateo Bridge. We saw some significant congestion in the area between uh, San Francisco and Mar uh, the Marin area near the San Rafael Bridge connector. Um, sort of expected, but a little bit longer. Uh, we didn't notice any significant incidents related to those things other than, uh, of course, congested traffic and the usual incidents that come along with that. Today we know that there are several events going on in the Bay Area, especially in the area of Berkeley and Oakland uh, with regard to the A's game and the, uh, and the Cal game coming up. So we ask motorists to expect delays on Interstate 80, both westbound and eastbound directions in that area, and also uh, northbound and southbound 880 in the Oakland area. Uh, we encourage people to going to those events, if possible, to use public transportation, as it will be a quicker and more direct ride in certain cases and may uh, obviate some of our uh, traffic congestion. Overall, we haven't seen any significant incidents related to the closure. All of the traffic incidents we've observed have been routine, so to speak. Uh, sort of the expected incidents whenever we have heavy traffic. Um, the CHP has been on hand to clear out all those incidents. If any incidents did develop, we were able to respond very quickly to clear them out of the roadway and to keep traffic moving as efficiently as possible. Obviously, we can't make the roadways go faster when you increase the volume of vehicles on it, 
but we do our best to make sure that it's clear. We want to remind everybody that we are in what we call a maximum enforcement period for the Labor Day weekend. Our primary goal during a maximum enforcement period is to keep the roadway safe, to reduce the number of DUI and speed related incidents, and to make sure that officers are on hand to take care of that. Our main goal is to make sure that the DUI driver is contacted and removed from the roadway prior to causing a potentially fatal incident. Uh, we are on goal with that. All of our officers are deployed. All of our beats are covered very completely in all the areas affected by this closure. We also have additional units monitoring the closure here. Uh, those units did not take away from our normal staffing priority. If there's any questions about traffic, I'd be happy to answer that. Which highways again, sir, are affected by the games? Today we expect Interstate uh, 80 in the area of Berkeley and uh, as well most likely 24, Highway 24 in the area of Berkeley to be affected by the Cal game and also 880 and perhaps 580 in the direct in the areas of Oakland for the A's game. And uh, again, reminding you that the A stadium is very accessible via BART and we encourage people to use that as a viable transit option to get to the game today. Abigail, you, you have CHP officers stationed at all of the, uh, I don't know if it's 15 or something, ramp closures, that's correct? That's correct. And you haven't had, you said you haven't had any incidents. I, I imagine that you don't know everything, but just anecdotally, can you speak to, you haven't had any people, you know, flipping out, getting upset, don't know that this is happening, uh, you know, causing problems? Uh, we, we uh, every time we have a road closure like this, we do encounter people who don't expect it to happen and obviously are unprepared for it. Um, Typically, those incidents are handled on the one-on-one -on -one basis with the officer there, and it's usually resolved to a, uh, to a mutual understanding without any significant incident. Um, obviously, we have people that come to the closure and have not seen the signs approaching it. We want to remind motorists that if they come to a closure they weren't expecting, to not pull into the closure and attempt to ask for directions, but rather to continue to a safe spot, exit the freeway, use 511 or uh, their GPS device to find their way to their destination. Uh, entering a construction zone, any cone zone, is illegal and dangerous for the very fact that the construction workers and the highway patrolmen behind those closures expect there to be no traffic. And so by introducing a vehicle into that, you, put, you create a very dangerous situation where the worker may, be, may have his life in peril. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. So with that, uh, any... Question here? Yeah. yeah. Any uh, update on the troll? Uh, the troll, uh, my understanding is that the troll, uh, much as he magically appeared, uh, he has magically disappeared. Um, and uh, we, um, his whereabouts uh, are unknown at the, at, the, at the moment, but we might have some information soon as to uh, when and where he will be reappearing. Hopefully that's coy enough. <laughs> All right. So logistics, uh, we make sure you have signed in. You have um, the safety gear. You need a hard hat, safety vest, just like this one here. Uh, footwear all looks good. Uh, if you do not have glasses with plastic lenses, um, you will need to borrow a pair of ours. We are going to be taking you out in 